Chris Marlowe and Heather Cox back at the NCAA Men's in, uh, Volleyball Championship. This is semifinal number one, Penn State and the University of Hawaii. Let's take a look at the Nittany Lions starting lineup. A 5-1 alignment. Justin Otto is the freshman setter. Geely is opposite. Yvonne Contreras, Jason Kepner, the outside hitters. And Kevin Hurricane, Sergio Pampina, the middle blockers. Penn State's head coach, a 1982 graduate of Penn State, Mark Pavlik, he's 35 years old. He was the interim head coach last year. He said this year they removed my interim, so I am now the head coach. Of course, these lineups presented by Nike. Let's go over to the Hawaii starters. The great Yuval Cox is opposite. Aaron Wilton and Nave Milo, the outside hitters. Sivan Leone, colorful, unorthodox, is in the middle along with Jason Ring. And senior Eric Pichel, local kid, out of Pacific Palisades here in Los Angeles is the setter. Mike Wilton, he spent 12 years at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. He's in his fourth year. And uh, he is a terrific coach building the Hawaii program. Chris, so, right off the bat, great head-to-head -head matchup with Contreras and Potts going up against each other in the lineup. Hawaii in white, and the first ball is hit off the top of the block, out of bounds. Nade Milo gets the kill. Three Israelis in the Hawaii starting lineup. This is one of them. He's a sophomore from Kibbutz Sarid, Israel. Penn State, first jump serve handling is Kevin Hurricane. He gets the kill. The jump serving Hawaii is going to be a key. And a huge confidence builder for Penn State that they did pass Milo. Serve Milo, one of the top two servers on this Hawaii team. Hawaii is the best serving team in men's volleyball. So for Penn State to come out and pass and execute on the first one, it's a huge confidence builder. Service error by Hurricane. This is game one, best three out of five. First four games had a 17 point cap, and then it's rally scoring in game five. Yvonne Contreras hits it straight down by Aaron Wilkin. Contreras, a 6 4 junior from Tampico, Mexico. Great fake in the middle. Pump fake gets one blocker in the air. You see Leona stay in, go one on one against Wilkin. Sivan Leone with a little description early. Leone. So powerful, so strong, a feisty competitor, and Penn State just not up in time. They've got a jump in the middle, not a full jump, so they can still get the outside. Nonetheless, you have to get your hands over the net. Can Penn State pass the powerful jump serves of Potts and Hawaii? That will be one of the keys in this match. We have no score. Game one. Short serve, Michelle to Leone, it's dug up. Penn State can get a point right here. They go to Contreras, and he's dug. Out of the back line, the ball hit by Ring. Penn State with a dig, back set. And Hawaii's on the attack. Pops. UV, his first kill. Toss, a player who has almost twice as many attempts as any other rainbow, still gets by. Penn State gets the double block up. Potts with his great arm swing can swing over the block and a good approach. No score. Otto sets left and Contreras, BB, Wilton going for it. And he's got it up. So Hawaii plays it over. Free ball, Penn State. Penn State in blue. Otto sets left. Hawaii blocked it. Penn State dug it. Contreras. And it's into the net. Hawaii has scored the first point. Good action so far. Both teams coming out very aggressive, not tentative. Doesn't look like there's a case of the jitters for either team. Here is Aaron Wilton, son of the coach. Jump serve. Perfect pass for Ferris. And the put away. I like it by Pompina. He's up in the air before the ball leaves the center's hand. That way, Pompina is able to beat the block of Hawaii. He's a 6'5 freshman from Penn Hills, Pennsylvania. Pretty good serve. Back sends a Potts. And Potts whacks it off the defense. Pretty good set by Pichel, a one-hander. Penn State is trying to take Potts out of the offense by serving in front of that three-meter line. By clogging up the front court, it takes away Hawaii's offensive pattern, and they're trying to make Hawaii a little bit more predictable. Sivan Leone with the jump floater. Otto sets left. And the big hit down the line, Jason Kepner. He's a senior. Make that a junior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, hitting 336. 
Penn State Auto trying to get the set out very quickly. You see there's about a three-foot hole in the Hawaii block. Kepner still goes to the line and succeeds off the block. Hawaii won, Penn State nothing here in game one. Pichelle is whipped in the middle by Ring. Otto back set, and a big hit by Yvonne Contreras. He leads the Lions in kills and bids. He's got two early spike successes. Contreras awarded yesterday with a first-team All-American. He was also a first-team All-East in the season. Tied at one. Pretty good pass by Wilton. Trying to get the middle established. The setup is outside hitter. Michelle sets left. And a big blast. Nave Milo with two kills. The beauty of Cashel setting, he likes to jump it quite a bit, so he holds the middle. He gets Milo one on one. There's about two feet in between that block, and Milo is able to just pound seam. All you can do if you're Penn State is hope to get it right and dig. Cashel with the jumper. Otto sets left. And so far, let's give some credit to Justin Otto, the 6 1 freshman setter, number six for Penn State. He's the only one that does not have championship experience, and so far he's setting pretty well. The freshman doesn't look nervous at all, and he's the third setter to set for Penn State this season. Game one, it's 1-1. Hurricane is 6-8, he blocks. Whip it over to Cox, and Cox hits it off. Campina, out of bounds. Yuval Cox, his career high 43 kill, set earlier this year against UCLA. And now Hawaii to finish with a record of 26 and two. The only losses were to UCLA in five and Santa Barbara last week in five. And already a full rotation for both teams. It's only 1-1. One, one. Both teams siding out extremely well. Hawaii, we've talked about one of the best side out teams in the nation. Penn State doing a nice job offensively as well. Back set to Koch, dug by Hurricane, 1-1. One, one. Penn State looking for two. Over to Contreras, and he puts it away. Ivan Contreras, he started his career as a middle blocker, and then he went the opposite his sophomore year. He's playing his third position swing hitter, and he's good. Talk about versatility and a gifted athlete. Look at the power in his swing. Hawaii putting up a very tight penetrating block. Contreras can hit over or around. Good pass by Hawaii. And the ball is hit into the bottom of the net by Aaron Wilton. So Penn State leads 3-1. to one. Great strategy here by Penn State. They lead Wilton one-on-one, -on -one, commit two blockers to Cox. Wilton, a smaller outside hitter, who has to start tough. If he starts small, he doesn't have a good match. Good pass by Wilton. They set him. It's a high off the top of the block. Aaron Wilton, 6'1", junior, out of Los Angeles. He was named a second-team All-American at the ABCA Coaches Banquet, the NCAA Banquet held last night. And now Jason Ring will serve it. Pretty good serve, excellent pass, and the ball hit. Pampina, big surprise this year, Pampina. He's an emotional player, a red shirt. Matter of fact, in an elevator last year, he told me, I'm going to be the man next year, and he has been a starter and a good player all year for them. Wilton over the top, no touch detected, and it's 4-1 to one, Penn State. How important is it? for Penn State to get the lead is Wilton concerned. It's key, especially when Wilton's in the front row. Penn State really wants to attack. Wilton is a great defender and server, but not as strong in the front court. Cox hits it off the block out of the, the four kills for Yuval Cox. He's a sophomore in eligibility, 6'5", from Haifa, Israel. Our referees, that was Pat Karras. He's up. Our down official is Ken Taylor. Look at that stat, 7.7 .7 kills to a game. Leads the nation has 613 kills on just this one season. Little spin serve, it was off speed, 4-1. Down the line, nice play by Cox. Will they set it? Michelle back set, Cox. See ya! Boy, the ball comes off his arm like a thunderbolt. He has an amazing shoulder rotation. You can watch his whole torso turn. It's amazing, the textbook swing that he has. Let's see if Potts can get a little mustard on this one. Hawaii trailing 4-2. He tosses it up. Vintage Potts here, too. Whenever he tosses up a ball, he'll always ask for a second ball. And he very, very rarely tosses it up and lets it fall because it's a bad toss. He likes to keep Penn State on the field. So Next time he serves, we'll have to get a shot of it. He has the highest toss in the history of volleyball. He throws it up about 30 feet, so his timing is impeccable. It's a good thing that Hawaii no longer plays in Plum Gym. That toss will hit the ceiling as the Plum Gym the, the old gym that Hawaii used to play. A float serve drops, and right now Hawaii is playing poorly. Game one, Penn State five, Hawaii two. We'll come back to Pauley Pavilion after this. 
game one. Penn State leading Hawaii 5-2. Number five, Jason Kepner. He was a member of Penn State's national championship team two years ago. In the season opening tournament in Hawaii, Kepner lost his championship ring on Waikiki Beach in Honolulu. He searched for it. He couldn't find it. Went home. Didn't tell anybody. Three months later, Penn State coach Mark Pavlik got a call as that ball is put away. He got a call from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, a tourist named Charles County had found the ring and wanted to know if there was a Kepner on Penn State. So a happy ending. Kepner got his NCAA championship ring back last week. And uh, just to follow it up, Kepner sending the thank you note to a good Samaritan, Charles County. So we far, have great defense going on here. Ball through the hands of Contreras Point, Hawaii. What do you suppose Mike Wilton told Hawaii in the timeout? Well, they have to play a little bit headier. They've missed three serves. They also aren't hitting well. But look at the great defense and the ball control here by Contreras. Obviously, his hands are wet. The rule in men's and women's volleyball, you can't take it overhand, but it's got to come off fairly clean. Can't spin. 5-3, Hawaii trailing, looking to go to four. Here comes Potts. Yes. The Bows pulled it in one. Yuval Cox with six kills. Cox has been the go-to guy so far for the Rainbows. They have been so successful going to him out of the back row and the front row. Short serve, set left, Kepner, and he Kepner hits it off the block by that. So you can see Jason Kepner ringing one up <laughs> on the left side. And here is Sergio Pampina. Pampina looking for the floater, and it's into the net. Let's check service errors. Penn State with two, Hawaii with three. Early action. But the big surprise, Chris, Penn State with one ace, Hawaii with no aces so far. As we said, serving and blocking integral to this Hawaii success. Serving the NCAA semifinals and final is much more difficult. Let that ball popped up. Nice play by Wilton. Michelle. And a big blast, right side, Nave Milo. Credit that Hawaii point with tremendous communication. Great set by Michelle. You see his back is turned to Penn State so that they can't detect his shoulder rotation. Nobody knows where it's going. It goes to Milo, but credit Aaron Wilton with great communication on the back foot play to shoot the ball up. Good pass and a big hit, Kevin Hurricane a key member of the NCAA championship team two years ago. He's a senior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, hitting 391, which is terrific. And today hitting 1,000, three for three so far on attempts. 5-5 five, five here in game one, Hawaii, Penn State. Left side, Milo again. When Milo gets hot, they say on the island, it's Milo time. And so far it has been here in game one. Milo with five kills. I'm Chris Marlowe with me. Heather Cox. Great blast, Hawaii. The ball is dug up. Contreras shovels it over. Hawaii to take the lead. Milo, nope. As Kepner rejects. Chris, phenomenal volleyball so far for the national semifinals. Penn State doing a great job passing Eric Cashel in any other match. That would have been an instant ace. Penn State keeping the ball alive. Mark Pavlik, a 1982 graduate of Penn State University. He's got a good sense of humor about it. He said, I was passively recruited to Penn State, not <laughs> actively recruited, but he's a lifetime Nittany Lion, and he has developed into a very, very good volleyball coach. Late developer. So here is Jason Kepner, considered uh, one of the top passers in the country. Pretty good pass there. They look it over to Milo, and Hawaii, there was a Hawaii player under the net or touched the net. And Penn State's going to regain the lead at 6-5. Jason Green got the net with his shoulder. And Kepner serving the floater. And trouble there as Contreras tips it off the setter who's considered a back row blocker. Because Michelle is in the back row, he cannot go up and attack the ball if it is crossed the plane of the net. Michelle, the captain of the team, the only one. Here you see Michelle goes up, it goes off the Contreras, and then off Michelle's hand, considered an attack, a back row attack. Point to Penn State. 7-5, Penn State leading Hawaii here in game one. That serve flies out of bounds. 
So Hawaii, which led the nation in service aces with 214. However, the Bows did make 526 serving errors. Pretty good pass there. Otto sets left, Contreras. Wow. Going in dig by Pichel. Otto, right side. Hawaii blocks it up. Pichel sets left. Wilson. Otto sets left. Contreras got it. Ivan Contreras. He has four kills. He hit 390 during the regular season. And look at the great hustle out of the back row from Kepner. And Otto, a front row player, gets his blocker, Aaron Walton, up in the air. And great push set. Very strong legs from Otto to get it out to the end. Game one, seven, five, Penn State. Here comes Wooten, and Wooten chops it inside the block. So Aaron Wooten warming up Wilton with three kills. Campina could not handle that one. Chris, so far I'm surprised that Hawaii hasn't gone to the line attack a little bit more when Otto's in the front row. Otto at 6 one, one of the shortest players in the New Lions. There's the back set, and Contreras dug up by Milo. Whip it over to Kotz, he's on the line, but it doesn't matter, he's in the front row. Otto sets left, here comes Contreras, and he whips it out of bounds, no touch. Point, Hawaii. You know, there's a no-touch call, however, Simone Leone came down pulling his finger out, almost like it had been jammed in the attempt to block. Leone in the middle front. There's Wilton. Seven sixes are scored. Penn State. Oh, and there's a block. Potts and Leone, the tandem from Israel, with a stuff on Contreras. Hawaii. Boy, looking at this shot, you'd think that we were in Honolulu right now, but no. More than a thousand tickets purchased for Hawaii fans here. And another 2,000 given away. Contreras with the rocket. Going by Leone. So Contreras comes right back. And Penn State will have it. 7-7 is our score here in game one. Best three out of five. And here is Justin Otto. He replaced Carlos Ortiz, the All-America center who was ruled ineligible academically early in the season. It really hurt Penn State's progress, but the freshman Otto really able to step in and do a pretty good job. Well, some say that with Ortiz, Penn State would be the number one seed in this tournament and back to, you know, looking for their second national championship. However, Otto has come in just as a freshman and done a tremendous job running. He's the quarterback on this team, runs the offense, isn't very vocal out there, however, has tremendous leadership by example. Here's Otto with the jumper. Good pass, Wilton on the money. Out of the back line, ring. Pounds it. 6'4", Junior from Los Angeles, his first kill. Ring has been very quiet so far, but you can look from the approach that he had. He's got a 40-inch vertical. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pichel go to ring more often in the back row. Yuval Kotz, high toss. Pretty good pass. 8 7 star score. Contreras off the hands, working on Wilton. Now, one thing you'll notice if you're watching, Hawaii has a very short blocking team, but the Bows are very good on floor defense. So Mike Wilton doesn't expect to block a lot, but he likes transition, digging, and then putting the ball in. Well, they rely on their serve to make their opponent's offense predictable. That's why they have such a great transition game. That ball came up somehow. Over the net, Pichel plays it. 8-7 our score. Was there a touch? Yes. So you've got to love a right side player that will set the setter. Any setter lives and dies for the opportunity to pass that first ball and have the right side player who is caught in this instance is the second setter dish it right back up to Pichel who gets a fingernail, finger tip. So Hawaii will serve Aaron Wilson to put the ball in play. Good, good, good. Good high Eight seven is our score. Penn State by one. Kepner popping it through. I would say right now that if Penn State can continue to pass well, they'll stay right in with Hawaii. The keeper Hawaii get the jump serve going and cause some confusion on Penn State's passing rotation. Definitely, Hawaii wants to make Penn State predictable. Right now, with the great Penn State passing, they're able to go in ten to ten on their offense. Hawaii can't pull it up a tough block. Cots is dug. Penn State out of the back line. Contreras. Oh, beautiful dig by Ring. Cots goes and gets it. Chunks it in, and nobody's going to get there. Setter vacated, and the ball drops. Give the ball to the Bows. Hawaii won its first 13 matches this year, lost to UCLA, won its next 15, and then lost to Santa Barbara last week. 
Nice play by Penn State. This is the Contreras kill and the hustle by Hawaii that ends up with Otto digging the ball and Penn State not able to convert. Sivan Leone with the ace. So Leone, the 6'4 middle blocker from Israel, he normally plays in a Tony the Tiger headband, but he forgot to bring it. So he had to go out and buy a piece of felt and cut it up. No writing on it that we can see at the moment. Down the line goes Jason Kepner. It is out of bounds, and Hawaii has its second lead, 9-8. Otto sets left to come Kepner again, and Kepner waffles that out of bounds. Hawaii 10, Penn State 8, and there's an official timeout. We're coming back. Penn State had the lead, but now the Nittany Lions trailing by two to the bowl. At Holly Pavilion, home of UCLA, right now it's the NCAA semifinal number one. Penn State and Hawaii. Two teams that met in the national semifinal last year. Penn State outlasting Hawaii three games to two. And in game one, it's been a seesaw battle. Hawaii's led a couple of times. Most of the action dominated by Penn State, but Hawaii now coming on. Right now, Hawaii on a five long run. Kepner went dry. Contreras in the back row. Key play right here for Penn State to get that momentum back. A lift is called. Give the ball to the Bows. Great swing and attack by Milo. It gets trapped in with Otto. Tight whistle with the, the lift call. That's very tough to play that ball out of the net. He's patient with her to nearly touch the floor. Great serve. Otto has to shove it over. Pichel set back. Nobody there. Penn State trailing Hawaii by two. And Contreras a little bit frustrated. Contreras finally gets to the front row. Wants to make a difference for the team. However, he got a low set. In that instance, he's just got to keep the ball in play by the he contacted the ball, it was below the net. He puts out a ball from the Hawaii has its biggest lead, 11 to 8. Set left. Hurricane on the left now. Otto sets Hurricane again. And they block it on the line. Point Hawaii. And timeout goes to Penn State. So the Bows starting to celebrate as they take control here in game one. Hawaii 12, Penn State 8. Game one, it's 12 to 8, Hawaii. Hawaii drew 154,811 fans this year. They had 20 matches. The Bows averaged 7,700 fans. They had seven crowds of more than 10,000. It is a phenomenon, unlike any other volleyball program in the country ever. And right now that phenomenon is truly helping Hawaii. Look at this scoring run. They've been able to buckle down. They, they know what it's like to play under pressure. Penn State, on the other hand, making errors that they didn't make at the beginning of the game. Another service there. They had five hitting errors for that 7-1 run. They are making mistakes, and Hawaii is capitalizing on it. Here comes Nave Milo. And Hawaii, you can see they're getting confidence when they're serving. Contreras. <laughs> Pops it through the block. So Ivan Contreras, he had 945 attempts uh, coming in this year at 526 kills. Hawaii leading by four here in game one. Ball dug back over. There's Milo. Over to Cots, and Cots creams it. Great rotation right now for Hawaii. They've got three hitters in Cots, Milo, and Leone. Nice dish by Fischel, the jump set holds the middle block. He's over Pantina by about a foot and a half on that play. We have a substitution coming in for Hawaii. Super sub Kahinu Lee, a six foot sophomore from Captain Cook, Hawaii. He comes in and rips the jumper. So here comes Lee. Down the line, a rocket. And Penn State can't return it. That is the beauty of the new service rule, serving behind, anywhere behind the baseline. Look at the angle that Lee can create, going for that left baseline. Until 
you could serve anywhere from the baseline. That was an impossible area to get on the jump. Twelfth ace of this year for Lee. And he serves it out of bounds. What's his ratio? That's his 36th error. So he's about a three to one ratio, but Mike Wilton likes to put it in to uh, step on the gas for the ball. And in the men's game, when serving is so important, a two to one or three to one ratio is exactly where you want to be. They set Sivan Leone and he pops it out of bounds. So let's see how Hawaii reacts now with a big lead. Hawaii up 13 to eight, now it's 13 to nine. And now Penn State right where they want to be with Contreras in the front row, three person attack with Otto in the back row, but another service error. That's Five service errors already for Penn State. They had zero in the first half of this game. Why also has five. Here comes Potts' high toss as Otto checks it out. Look at that toss. And he cross courts it out of bounds. The only toss about that high I've ever seen on the men's pro beach volleyball to a Brent Rohoff, one of the ABP stars, throws it up a mile. Especially to playing outside. That's tough. You never know with a win. You don't want to have to take over. With the four point Hawaii lead, Potts. You know what's amazing about Potts? We talked about how many times he gets set over 1,100 this year, how many kills, but he's always got two players on him or three players on him. Great double block out of the back row, but look at his elevation and that arm swing. He literally is unstoppable. In fact, Wilton said he has an uncanny ability to turn bad into good. Contreras, he's dug up. Why looking for a point. Again to Pichel. And Pichel. Oh, excuse me, Milo. It is Milo. Milo, the 6'2 sophomore, gives Hawaii its first game point. But first, Penn State going to take a timeout. We'll come back. Hawaii in command here in game one. Stay with us. The crowd going crazy here in Westwood, California. The Hawaii Rainbows have their first game point. They are standing. Penn State in trouble. It's 14 to 9. Penn State in blue. And we're going to get a touch, and Penn State, let's check it. The under official, Ken Taylor, is saying that a Penn State player touched the net or went under, and if that's so, Hawaii's going to win game one. Kepner had to reach for that ball. He either went under the net or got the net, but it did look like his foot, his foot has to be entirely over the halfway mark. If it's three quarters of the way, that's legal. If he's over, the game is over. It's over. Hawaii wins game one. He is under both. Actually, his knees went under, but you couldn't see. Let's check his feet. It's the feet or whether or not he's into the net. From this angle, hard to tell. That's a tough call. His toes come up, so his heels are not on the end line. However, if they were, it was legal. And it was really a great save by Jason Kepner. It was an errant set. He's just trying to save it, remember. Let's take one more look. Well, you can really get a big watch ankle burger on this one. See if it goes into the bottom of the net and then watch where his toes land. Net right there with his face. However, his feet are not under. His toes are, his heels are up, but if his heels were down, it's legal. Here's the angle. He's under. There he is. He's definitely Let's under. See when he, yeah, when he rolls back, he's still under. All right, so the refs get one right. Hawaii wins game one. We'll continue with our coverage of the NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship after this. Welcome back to Westwood, California. Game one, going to the Hawaii Rainbows 15 to nine. I'm Chris Marlowe, along with Heather Cox. If you look at the history of NCAA Men's Volleyball, UCLA has been the dominant team, 15 titles. Pepperdine and USC next. Penn State, Long Beach State, and San Diego State each with one title. Yes, Hawaii has never won a title, although Hawaii has been a, a perennial power in women's volleyball. Their men's program are really coming to life in the last few years. As we take a look at the game one stats, Heather, what do you see? The key for Penn State is the momentum breaker at the halfway point. They started out hitting over 500, finished hitting just at 200 with only 16 kills. The service aces, excuse me, the service errors also killed Penn State. Hawaii with six, big difference, took Penn State out of their offense. So Penn State starts with a side out. Kevin Hurricane getting the set from Justin Otto, and now the Nittany Lions will serve it up. Another key for Hawaii that you didn't see on the stat page is they have diversified their offense. They do tend to rely on Cox, but Cox, Milo, and Wilton all made a tremendous impact in game one. 
one of the big problems for Penn State. Penn State is a taller team, a more physical team, and you expect Penn State to block, and if they don't, they're dead. It's very tough for them to read around the block. If the block is not set up right, it's very hard to go in and dig through the seam. First block for Kevin Hurricane, and that ball hit straight down by Jason Rink. He grew up in Oregon, came down to Los Angeles, went to Pierce Junior College, and then on to Hawaii. A very quick and exciting athlete, very emotional. And known to his teammates as Country Boy, or sometimes Woody from the character of Cheers. Just a down-home guy, loves to fly fish. One nothing is our score. Penn State in blue, Hawaii in white. So Penn State will serve it. Penn State with a Mexican national and a Puerto Rican national in uh, their starting lineup. And of course, Hawaii with the three Israelis. So international volleyball players uh, coming to the United States and really, I think, adding to the flavor of NCAA men's volleyball. Well, they've all got that international experience, so they come in as freshman or sophomore eligibility, but they've got so much international experience and maturity that they're a tremendous asset, especially if they stay for four years. one nothing Penn State. Back set here comes Contreras. Nice up by Otto. He scooped it out, and Kepner hits it out of bounds. Point one. This is game two. The opening moments were tied at one. Contreras, certainly a player not used to getting blocked. Penn State doing a nice job scooping up and covering. Pretty good kick there. There goes Milo. And a ball on the way as well. Hawaii likes to play a little pinball defense. Bing, 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 bing. They had one there. And Pampina is roofed by Leone. Penetration in the air before the ball is even set. Talk about commitment. Talk about a reaction. That's the way to get your team fired up. What floor defense. That time, too many contacts. Hawaii 2, Penn State 1. The Nittany Lions will have the ball. Contreras has eight kills to lead the Lions. Great hustle by the Rainbows. They can't quite execute. Again, you have to get it over on three, but nice thing about the Good pass there. Wilton no, 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 thought he was getting something no, inside. No, no. He did not watch the only. No, back set. Cots. And Cots cranks another. Nine kills for Cots. Great explosion. Look at the shoulder rotation and the snap. All that comes from the stomach muscles, strong legs, and a quick shoulder rotation. Pretty good pass there by Kepler. Otto back set. And Hurricane fires it off the block, out of bounds. Ball control much improved for this year. Actually, a pretty good digger there. In addition to being a very good blocker and hitter. Hurricane now with four kills on the night. Seen very high numbers, though. 333. Oh. Back line, ring, bombs it. Now, one of the Penn State strategies coming in, as told to me by Mark Havlick, was to serve short inside the three-meter line. Well, they did that as well in January against Hawaii. They want to mess up the crossing patterns. Hawaii likes to run a sophisticated offense, get a lot of crosses and combos and options going with that short serve they're not able to. Kepner is stuck. So Hawaii not known for its blocking. Leone and Milo were there. We'll give it to Leone. That's his second stuff. And Hawaii starting to get some momentum, starting to get the rhythm. 3-1 now. Both. Contreras. Leone had it up. Michelle pokes it up. And Cuts fires it through. Kills for Cox. Penn State trying to side out at Pampina. It's one through. Really surprised Pichelle. Pichelle tried to block that left front on the middle. He's normally a right front blocker as a setter. Huge height disadvantage for Pichelle. Pampina with the floater. Perfect pass. Wilton is on the money so far. And the dig by Contreras. And off the hand. That ball is legal. Leone didn't get a touch. I don't think so. Oh, they did. Called in the corner. Oh, yeah. In the corner, first referee Pat Karras looked around and one of the linesmen had it and things not going well for Penn State coach Mark Pavlik at the moment. That's a legal play. Once you block it, you can touch it again. 
Chris, what do you think? I didn't I think Hurricane catch. got it. I think number 11 in if blue, Hurricane. If anybody did, the 6 7 Hurricane did. He's mad. He is mad. And he glares at the referee. Let's see if he gives him one more stare here. Uh, Too mature, the fifth year <laughs> graduate. That's right. There's our first referee, Pat Karras. Official likes to let the players play. We won't see too many unusual calls, we don't think. We're in game two, Hawaii four, Penn State one. Hawaii has scored 14 of the last 17 points. Remember the Bulls ended game one with a 10-2 run. This is gonna get past out of left side, Contreras in trouble. He sneaks under the net, goes back, that's legal. Gives it over to Milo, and he hits it into the bottom of the net. Penn State going to a three-person serve receive on every rotation. It's something that they've practiced all week because normally they go with a two-person serve receive. However, with this tough jump, tough, tough jump serve, they're able to pass a lot better than their athletes. Kepner White passing just perfectly. Hot. Nice up, Contreras. Nobody there. And the ball hit the antenna before Contreras could snag it. So Hawaii gets the ball. Cross, nice job, deceptive play. He goes up with a full approach, it looks like he's gonna swing, and then tips it right over. We call that the Statue of Liberty play. And Contreras just can't convert, can't keep it out of the antenna. That's a play Justin Otto has to get in there and set that ball. He was down at the bottom of the pile. As the block pancaked up, whip it over to Contreras, and he's stuck. Aaron Wooten, the 6'1 junior, up high. And a timeout is called. Here in Los Angeles, California, Hawaii 5, Penn State 1. Three blocks, 13 hitting errors, Hawaii 5 to 7. So the percentage is favoring Hawaii. Hawaii leads the match one game to none. The Bulls also leading here in game two, five to one. Chris Marlowe with Heather Cox. Why is Hawaii winning this match? Right now, they're serving so much better. They're causing Penn State to be very predictable. Right now, Otto has got to work on diversifying his offense, making it a little bit more sophisticated, running some combo plays. Hawaii, on the other hand, is able to run out of the middle flawlessly, and that's their one weakness. Hawaii on the tack, set lap. I'll tell you, Aaron Wilton is playing with a world of confidence. They say he's the best athlete on the team. Wiry little guy, but he can fly. He's got five kills so far. So now, Jason Ring will serve. And pass by Kepler. Otto sets out of the back line, and down the line goes David Geely. Boy, I haven't even heard David Geely's name, probably because I haven't said it much. That's his first kill in this match. So they have not been utilizing Geely, and maybe that's part of the plan now to get him involved. Well, at the, on the onset, I thought that Penn State had the advantage over having more attackers, whoever they've been relying on Contreras, haven't been setting the opposite position or the middle. 5-1 is our score, and another rocket on the left. And Penn State's block, quite frankly, is very uh, Jesus right now. Big cheesy holes up there as Hawaii continues to pound away ring with five. Penn State needs to work on their lateral movement, get their middle blocker's foot next to the outside hitter's foot so there's no seam in the block. Vintage Hawaii volleyball. Penn State players are saying that Cox foot faulted, that he was on the line. However, they let it go and it dropped. Let's check it. Look at how high that toss is. Great timing, great explosion. You see the wrist roll right over the top of the ball, gets that top spin. Okay, the key is pass the ball first and then argue. Right, don't let it affect your play. Way back that time, and he misses long. If you're wondering about the surface used here at UCLA, uh, this is sport court as you look at the aces by Yuval Potts, third in the nation. This is sport court, the volleyball surface of the 90s. Brand new one brought here to UCLA for the NCAA championship. Penn State trying to dig it out, and all the things that were going well for Penn State in game one have not materialized here in game two. They came out with so much confidence. Penn State really does have the experience edge. They've been to the national championship six years in a row. The chicken wing, though, doesn't work. They're playing not to lose rather than playing to win. They've got to get the confidence, get an attitude back. Hawaii leading six to one. Looking for seven, Wilton off speed, and it drops. That right there, mark it as the straw that broke the camel's back. No communication. Timeout called. The Bows are on fire. Seven to one. They lead Penn State. 
Chris Marlowe, Heather Cox, game two, Hawaii on a roll. Hawaii up by six. But Penn State is having a lot of problems right now. Contreras blasted down the line out of bounds. Right now, Hawaii's offense running on all cylinders. Penn State having to rely on Contreras. The pressure is heavy on Contreras' shoulder. He's trying to just thread the needle down the line, pass the swing to play the ball in. Set left, here's Kepner, and Kepner whacks it off. You've all caught out of bounds. Hawaii has scored 17 of the last 21 points in this volleyball game. Now, first substitution for Penn State, Jake Yenchar comes in. Yenchar, a 5'11 junior from Kent, Ohio, a terrific defensive player. It's 8-1 Hawaii. Hot, stink, poked up. And Hawaii gets it. 11 kills for UV. He's the man that really started the pandemonium when he came uh, to the University of Hawaii. They tell me that he got there, everybody came out to see Yuval Kotz, and they got a load of the Hawaii volleyball team, and then it's become like well, the thing to do. <laughs> he is the man in Hawaii. In fact, they stay until midnight signing autographs. Yuval Kotz, Quilt, and Ring are the crowd favorites. Into the middle, good set by Justin Otto to Kevin Hurricane. This is game two, eight one is our score. Hurricane with seven kills and a block. And now Penn State will put in Daniel Pollock, the 6 3 freshman from Richmond. Pollock, a player very familiar with Hawaii. In fact, he was the starting center for Penn State when they played Hawaii back in January. Since then, they've gone to auto. Pollock does have a great defensive ability, though. But look at the passing from Hawaii. They're able to run their middle, which is something that they don't do very well in the past, but they're able to run those quick 31 attacks. Pollock in there for defensive purposes. He will not set, and now the Nittany Lions will have it. Penn State lost three of its first four matches this year, then went 23 and two. Hurricane now with eight kills. Still Hawaii leads by seven. Hots. Exactly what you want. Soft block, keep the ball in play. And the pass by Yanchar is too close, and it's jammed down by Jason Ring. Not going to win a jumping contest with Ring. He can really bowling. Any joust with the net, be the last one to touch it. Even if you've got the height disadvantage, jump last, touch it last, and push it down. Here comes Hilo. He was a big star in game one. Hilo was hot. He had seven kills in game one. And now Hurricane will serve. Big rotation boost for the Nittany Lions. Cantina back into the front row at 6 5. Will middle block next to Contreras. They make it for Otto's lack of height. Penn State they're pressuring now with seven errors. They have a couple of aces. Hawaii with three aces and nine errors. So Mark Pavlik, Penn State Nittany Lions trailing one game to none and 8 1 here in game two. And Cantina hits it out of bounds. up against Leone, trying to rotate his shoulders a little bit too sharp of an angle to get by Leone. 15 hitting error for Penn State as the Nittany Lions really struggling to stay in here. Contreras gets the kill. Of course, you remember the great Ed Josefowski uh, playing on Penn State last year. You might remember the national semifinals. Josefowski's father had a heart attack uh, during, uh, between the semis and the final. We're glad to report that uh, a year later, he is doing very well now. Ed Josefowski playing in Brazil last year. Down the line, Aaron Wilk. Got it. 9-1 is our score, Hawaii dominated. Watch Wilk, he shows angle and does the blind turn down the line. His shoulder shows everything but angle and he hits right over the top of him down the line. Here goes Patented shot. Hots with the serve, pretty good pass. He took something off it. And Contreras with the rocket. Side out. Contreras hitting 390 on the season, has so many accolades this season and last, has made a tremendous impact on this program. Perfect pass, both teams serving pretty easy right now, and that ball slapped through there. You know, I've really been surprised with Hurricane's defense. There have been about three or four balls that have dropped right in front of them. We need to have, he has got to communicate and go after the ball. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pavlik put in a back row sub for him. 
Irving is going short. Otto, next play. Nice play to David Geely in a good set by the freshman Justin Otto. So there is Geely, his second kill. He's a sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And talk about a major jump of 32 inch vert for Geely. And that serve goes long. Of course, Penn State winning the national championship two years ago. Mark Havlick told me once his goal one year is to win the national championship with all players from Pennsylvania one day. That's his goal. Hasn't done that yet, but he's got a lot of them on there. Geely. And Geely's dug. It's 9 1 Hawaii. Here comes Potts. And he pokes it over. Penn State on the attack. And Hurricane is really warming up. Another good set by Otto. I like Penn State setting a little more if they can. Well, they need the pass to do it. They've got to have the pass to have the execution. That gives Otto three opportunities, three setting choices, keep the wide block on their toes, make them move out of Here is David Geely. And he's into the net. Penn State really struggling with getting off a launch. The key to volleyball is to have two good plays in a row. You really want to side out and have that transition game, but you've got to score. Michelle, strong jump serve, Otto ties to jam it, and Milo is there. Timeout call. Penn State led one to nothing, and Hawaii has scored 10 unanswered points. We'll come back with more right after this. We mentioned the crowd mania of the University of Hawaii, how they love their players. Broadcaster Chris McLaughlin told me one story. One night after a big win in Hawaii Special Event Center, Heather, you talked about it, how the players kind of have to sneak out of the arena while a bunch of teeny boppers were waiting for Aaron Wilton. The only way they could get him out was smuggle him out in the laundry bag. <laughs> so they smuggled him out, threw him out on the pavement, he got on his motor scooter and rode home with the teeny boppers in pursuit. Well, between Wilton Ring and Cox, they're bigger than rock stars, bigger than life over there on the island. Look at that face, though. That's it. That's a Tiger Beat face if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Chris Marlowe and Heather Cox. It has been all Hawaii. Penn State led in game one, seven to five, but then Hawaii going on a 10-2 closing run. Here in game two, Penn State has not been able to attack well or pass well, and Hawaii has really been playing smoothly. And the hitting percentage is reflected. Hawaii with a very high hitting percentage off the top of the block. And then you talk about hitting percentages, obviously Hawaii led the nation in hitting percentage. You have to give credit to Eric Pichel, the center. He's the guy that dishes it. He's the guy that gives all the players their fights. Plus Hawaii's great passing. They give yep. Pichel three offensive opportunities, hitting 382 on the season. That's exactly what Penn State needs, is that better pass so that they don't have to go to Contreras every time up against a very solid block. Look at this, they can fade instantly to the right. You see Ring goes away, they've got all three because Otto has to come off the net. He's only got one option. You know, Mark Pavlik, the Penn State coach, wanted Contreras on Cots, but now the problem, Cots is on Contreras. <laughs> 11 to one, our score, oh, and they again. get it again. But again, the case is they didn't get the pass to the target. Otto has to come off the net and he's only got one option. Get the Much laundry bag ready for Aaron Wilton. Look at the penetration. You can see Wilton's swing approach. Perfectly executed block. 12 to one is our score, Hawaii. And the put away in the middle by Kevin Hurricane. 10 kills for Hurricane. Right now, so important for Penn State. They've got the side out. It's just like running an next drill in practice. You have to get two points to score a point. Right now, they've got to play some defense. Pretty good pass there, back set. Oh, nice pop up by Contreras. They'll set him at first. Leone has it. Michelle, cuts, goodbye. 12 kills for Cox. He's got two blocks and an ace. Not only is Cox going against Contreras, but when Cox hits from the outside, he's going against the 6-1 honor. It's like a field day for you all Cox. It's a field day for Potts against virtually anybody. And now Hawaii is going to make some substitutions. Rick Toon comes into the front line, replacing uh, Sivan Leone. And here comes Kahinu Lee, the sophomore to serve. And he missed it. Both times he's come in at the back of the he missed his serve. So hard when you're on the bench, you cool off, the pressure's on because you know when you come in in the back row, you're coming in purely to get it in. 
Well, to one is our score, and Penn State will begin pressing the jump serve, serves it out of bounds, and now Yuval Cox will serve it. He was named the co-NCAA Player of the Year last night, along with UCLA Stein Metzger. Up high. American block. And down it goes. Rick Toon. Rick Toon, interestingly, he's the number one hitter in the nation percentage-wise, and he doesn't start. The reason he doesn't start, he spent the first semester of the offseason great net cam view in Chico, missed the entire preseason. It's a runaway for the Bows so far in game two, 13 to one. Part of the action uh, here at UCLA Poly Pavilion, that is Kia Carrera. Where is she sitting at? She's a <laughs> huge Hawaii fan. She was also at the Hawaii Outrigger Invitational. Oh, yeah. Do I do the Chris, hula? Do I tell you, if Kia Little Carrera comes shirt. over here, I'll be hula uh, all <laughs> night long. Just kidding, honey. All right. <laughs> 13 to 1. She was on her way, though, <laughs> Okay, we'll find out where she's sitting. We've got her spotted right there. And then as that ball goes down. And it's a point for Hawaii. So, Hawaii Rainbows, one point away from wrapping up game two. They lead 14 to one. This is Potts. Uh, Throws it, he'll ask for the next ball. Superstition abound on the Hawaii volleyball team. And he's into the bottom of the net. Cardinalson in volleyball never misses serve on game point or out of a timeout. Right now, though, Penn State has got to serve tough, make wise offense predictable to put up a solid block. That ball is thrown and gives the kill to Rick Toon, 6'6 sophomore from Kailua, Oahu. And that sums up Penn State's game, too. It's been a sit down affair for the Whitney Lions, and they have not been able to crack. Hawaii. Second game point for the Bulls. Communication key right now with the lack of confidence. To the high lollipop loader. So off Kepner. This could be it. It's Doug. Coming to the net. Kepner. And a collision. Hawaii's into the net. Milo took out Pampina. And now Pampina will serve. Emotions getting hot here in Holly Pavilion, Penn State. A little frustrated with some of the calls. Then getting hit under the net, but again, so important, they'll probably go for the short serve. If they do, it's got to fall before the three-meter line. Don't give them a lollipop so that Hawaii can go with three options. Hard to complain about the ball when you're getting through at 14 to one. Hawaii's been passing perfectly. Cachelle with the jam. Little big man. Well, again, the serve was too easy. Milo steps right in. He's the number one passer in the nation. Carrera loves it, but look at this flawless pass. Perfect for Pichel to dump with the left hand. That's what every setter loves to do is attack. He fakes the jump set and then slams down with the left hand. Third game point. No, football. Football. Still trying to play the music there, but his toe got the line. Right here, it gets the line. You can land in the court however you want, but before you take off, you must be behind the end line. The reaction says it all. Two missed serves on game point. Rickson frustrated. So back out of the server stage. Nino and Wilton pass all the ball. That's trouble. Ball passed over the net. Good guide shot by Jason Kepner and Hawaii. Gives up a point. 14 to 2 now. You never know when a run can start with a little play like that. Hawaii trying to close out game two. Ring bingo. Jason Ring, a very good quick hitter, has nine kills. He had one in game one, but eight here in game two. He's so quick, especially on that lateral movement, on that quick first tempo approach, he can get on top of the block. Here's Tuchel, and he looks it out of bounds. The 13th of service error for Mike Wilton's Hawaii Rainbows. And three in a row, Wilton, Looking cool as can be now, but waiting for that locker room in between the games two and three. And the ball served into the net. Interestingly, Mike Wilton told me earlier this week, we don't like to miss our jump serves into the net. If we miss, we like to miss wide 
or, or long. Well, you want to give so them the opportunity to make the mistake, play a ball that's out. Nobody can play a ball that's out. Is it Not yet. And Kepner puts it away. Penn State just trying to get a little momentum, a little rhythm here. Certainly, and the key is don't make any mistakes. Kepner has been the go-to guy in the end of both of these games. In the end of game one, he made two key hitting errors. In the end of game two, he's done a nice job keeping the ball in play, forcing Hawaii to make the errors. Pretty good serve by Hurricane at 14 to 2. Uh, rejected by Pampina. And that's what Penn State needs, a little emotion. Fire up the team, Pampina. Penn Hills, Pennsylvania, but he plays with so much fire and emotion. That ball didn't even clear the net, but hey, Penn State serving. Perfect pass there, next play, and Cox. He hit it out of bounds, but Penn State cuts the net, so Hawaii will get the ball again. So Hawaii fans are up once again. Jason Ring will serve, game point number six. Shank pass, score! A beautiful kill by Ivan Contreras, the old bump kill. Take him however you can get him. I tell you, that's not a good sign for Hawaii. That, that shows that the Bulls have lost a little concentration, wouldn't you say? Well, I think they're getting a little bit complacent at 14-3. They're not communicating. Down the line. All blocked back. Still a huge lead for Hawaii. Rox is blocked back. Here comes the shell. Look at the look. And rolls it down the line. And the patented no look. Wilson over his shoulder, across his body, faces sharp cross court. That's so hard on his shoulder, and it takes a very gifted athlete to get that shot. Game point number seven. And you ball is going to float serve. Healy dug up. Game point, here it is. Wilt, yes. Two games to none, more action on the deuce right after this.